Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is August 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this segment, I am going to talk about a new study in nature that examines the effects of wildfires on permafrost and particularly discovering what many suspected before that wildfires accelerate permafrost thaw. And we're gonna go into the details of that in a minute. But before I do that, I'd just like to set the context a little bit here. So this satellite shot that we see from August 7th and today, I'm gonna to go ahead and advance this frame, shows numerous large fires burning throughout central Siberia, which includes a very large region of perma permafrost, the, one of the largest regions of deep permafrost in the world. Now, recently, year after year, we have tended to see large fires burning in this area. And this is certainly a concern due to numerous facts. The first is that Increasing temperatures over permafrost regions and increasingly frequent thunderstorms are increasing wildfire prevalence in these zones. Now, this is a signal of human-caused climate change due primarily to fossil fuel burning, which is rapidly warming the Arctic and enabling more and more fires to burn over the region. Not only do these fires produce local emissions by converting organic matter into carbon dioxide and, and methane, but there's a concern which has been validated that the process itself is, is, is a bit of a, a feedback that, that accelerates the loss of permafrost. In, and, and also accelerates permafrost contribution to the carbon cycle. Now, we haven't yet put an extremely fi fine point on how rapidly this process is accelerated and necessarily what volumes of carbon we are talking about, although the Sure paper from 2015 which identifies potential carbon feedbacks from permafrost in the Arctic over this century does appear to have hit in a good ballpark. So what we're doing here is we're just drilling down and we are looking at processes that could further activate the permafrost and unlock Schur's estimated approximate 92 billion tons of carbon into the Earth's atmosphere under mid-range warming scenarios. So this is certainly an area of science that, that we need to monitor, but we also need to be balanced in our approach in looking at it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an, a graphic from the recent study. Actually, I'll go ahead and give you guys the title. So the, the, subtle, uh, the study was led by Carol M. Gibson and a team of a number of scientists. And the, the study is entitled Wildfire as a Major Driver of Recent Perma Permafrost Thaw, Thaw in Boreal Peatlands. Now I'm gonna pull up a, a graphic from the study and, and talk about some of the study's major findings. Of course, you, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link so you guys can read the science, science study yourself and, and, and dig more into the details. I'm just going to hit some of the major findings. So what this study found is that wildfire is a major driver of permafrost thaw and that after large fires have occurred, the active permafrost layer has been found to increase in depth by 
over 60%. Now, the active layer is, is a layer that, that, that tends to thaw and refreeze and become biologically active or, or tends to thaw permanently but still has a layer of permafrost underneath. A, a deeper active layer can produce a, a great deal more carbon by, by contributing to the carbon cycle because the land is no longer frozen and bio, biological activity can occur. But what the site also found is that widespread development of talix, which are regions of thawed permafrost, sur usually surrounded by permafrost, develop over 30 years following a wildfire. So, so the wildfire appears to have a, a major impact on the permafrost underneath, increasing the depth of thawed zones and increasing the number of talic pockets or thawed pockets within the permafrost or at the edge of the permafrost. In addition, wildfires are responsible in total, according to this study, for 25% of all thermokarst bog expansion in the last 30 years. And that's, that's a big chunk. Now, what, what's a thermokarst bog? I'm, I'm going to show you a picture here from Wikipedia. So thermocross bogs are areas of permafrost that thaw and typically become wet and water-filled and are a noted source of both carbon dioxide and, and methane emissions from permafrost, changing the permafrost from a, a carbon sink into a carbon source. And th thermocross Karst bogs are, are one of the regions that are under examination as, as a fingerprint for feedbacks in the permafrost region. Now, thermocarsts can also form dramatic land subsidence features like the Badagaika crater in Siberia, which is, which is a massive expanding crater due to thawing permafrost underneath and resulting land subsidence. So this new study is, is an important addition to our understanding of how the Arctic may change as a result of human-caused climate change. I'm just going to add that the velocity at which the Arctic thaws in general and the rate at, rate at which wildfires increase and intensify throughout the Arctic is directly driven by how much fossil fuels we burn. This response that we are seeing in the Arctic now from wildfires is as a result of an approximate 1 degree to 1.2 degrees Celsius increase in global temperatures. If fossil fuel burning continues, and fossil fuel burning is the primary driver, it's in, in the driver's seat of, of this change that we are seeing, this, this feedback process that we see beginning in the Arctic will intensify and will worsen. So the new study does provide some understanding as to the processes that we observe that, that are now ongoing, but it also provides us with a warning, a warning that says, turn back, go no further. You're playing with some dangerous natural processes here and we don't want to cross more tipping points than we already have thank you for joining me and i'll be chatting with you soon